I'm not a HEMA practitioner, but I do have swordsmanship experience, as well as several years of hand-to-hand -hand and weapons training. And all of the techniques shown are gonna be based on my own research and experience that I've gathered from watching footage and also studying historical documents. If I do have any experts watching, I'd really appreciate your feedback in the comment section. Misconception number one, these swords are incredibly heavy. The sword typically weighs around three pounds, which isn't particularly heavy. Uh, especially a European broadsword, we think of them as being heavy, but you compare that to a katana, and a katana weighs around the same amount, maybe half a pound less, depending on its design. Um, swords come in a multitude of designs. You can have a one-handed variant, or you can have a larger two-handed variant. Uh, this variant I'm using in particular is called a hand and a half sword, or a bastard sword. Uh, and it's sort of the perfect balance between the two. I can use it with two hands, I can use it with one, and uh, it's used typically by heroes in movies because it gives you that perfect size where it's small enough that they can swing it around on camera and it still stays in shot, but they can also use it with one hand when they need to. So that's just the reality, it just looks good on camera. And the reality is we always depict these as being quite heavy, but you wouldn't want an incredibly heavy weapon, especially one that's designed to cut and be used as a blade. Uh, that doesn't make much sense, it's a weapon, you don't want it being too heavy and clumsy. That's just not very effective. Misconception number two, it swung like a baseball bat. I understand that things are gonna be sacrificed for the sake of drama. Uh, and what you'll often see in movies is people swinging these things with reckless abandon like they're baseball bats, like they're almost trying to club each other rather than focus on cutting, letting the weapon do the work for them. You'll see that typically with Japanese swords or Eastern swords when they do swordsmanship you'll see them draw the blade towards them. That's because of the blade being curved. It's gonna help accentuate that cutting motion. European swords tend to be straight. They didn't become curved until later years. Based on Eastern design, this means that it sacrifices cutting power for a better thrusting point, and also a blade on each side of the weapon, which means that it could be used either direction, giving you more versatility, and also allowing you to use the thrust at different points, allowing for some incredibly versatile and beautiful movements. Misconception number three, everyone used them. Now what you'll often see in movies is everyone running into battle with their swords drawn like so. But the reality is the vast majority of knights and also other cultures including samurais, they wouldn't have probably used a sword like this as their main go-to weapon in the battle. They probably would have favored a spear, a pole arm of some variety, perhaps a shield, or any other weapon like a bow or a crossbow. The sword was typically seen as a sidearm. Yes, swords are cool, but uh, the reality is the sword, especially when armor became better, it didn't become as effective, and it typically would have been used as a sidearm, with most choosing a shield, a spear, a lance, a crossbow, a bow, pole axe, something else that would have been more effective and been their go-to weapon. You'll also see this with samurai. Samurai would have been trained in a multitude of weapons, and typically the katana, the hand and a half sword, or at least their version of it, would have been their sidearm very typically. And that goes for Western knights as well. On top of that, most people just couldn't afford them. Misconception number four, the blade was the only part of the weapon. Now with the rise in HEMA, we've seen this in a few films, but many knights would have been trained in a discipline known as half sorting. And half sorting is where they would grab the blade about halfway, and they would use the sword as a sort of pole arm of sorts. And what this allowed is it allowed them to hook, defend, and do all sorts of different motions that you wouldn't typically do with a sword when you just use it with the hands on the grip. This hooking, this defending, this allowed them to initiate grappling, and sometimes they would even strike with the pommel of the sword using it as a blunt instrument. Fun fact for you, they believe that striking with the pommel of the sword is where the term pummeling comes from. Now using the weapon like this made it a lot more versatile. You could use the cross hill for many things such as hooking and grabbing, which would help you initiate grappling, which knights were also trained in. A lot of the time, two knights fighting would devolve into wrestling on the ground, one pulling a knife, stabbing the other, or getting the yield. A lot of the time, people just surrendered. Misconception number five, they blunted their swords purposefully. This one kind of makes me laugh, as what's the point of having a bladed weapon that you blunt and use as a blunt weapon? Wouldn't you rather just have a blunt weapon, like a club or a mace? or something very specifically designed to be used as a blunt weapon. If you think about it, if I've got a sword with a nice sharp point, but I blunt that point and use it as a club, I've completely put myself at a disadvantage. The shape of the sword, it doesn't make it a particularly effective blunt weapon either. 
because it's not very top heavy, it's actually quite balanced. And where this rumour comes from is it builds upon the last point I made about half sorting. What many knights would do is they would have gloves on which allowed them to half sort. However, some people didn't. And what they would do is they would leave the bottom half of the sword blunted or unsharpened, that way they could grab it and do their half sorting motions. Now this rumour probably stems from a multitude of things, probably that plate armour was so effective, but there's a bit of truth to it, because as I said, they blunted half the sword and they also blunted them for competitions. Martial arts competitions have been going on a long time and Europe was no different, with many knights having melees. So, in summary, the European broadsword is a very versatile, elegant and beautiful weapon, and many of its traditional techniques have been lost to time. And due to the advent of firearms, this sort of style of weapon fell out of favour because people stopped wearing armour, they didn't need big heavy swords anymore with sharp points, and it started to become favourable to have small light ones that could pierce and penetrate, or even, because armour wasn't worn anymore, nice slashing weapons. Which is where we see Westerners adopt a more Eastern style curve for their swords. The European broadsword is a weapon that stood the test of time, and the broadsword appears in many cultures. But unfortunately, due to the historically bloody and violent nature of Europe, this weapon has been viewed as being very brutish, which is a shame because many of the movements that you'll see are actually quite elegant and graceful. And this paired with our romanticism in the West of Eastern style swordsmanship, especially the samurai, means that these weapons are always depicted in movies as being very heavy, clumsy, and just overall very brutish. And the reality is far from that. If you see traditional European swordsmanship and the moves that they're doing, you'll see that elegance and flow to a lot of it. The reality is, guys, whether it's Eastern or Western, swords are just a sharpened bit of metal designed to hit people with, okay? And they all work in a really similar way. And unfortunately, due to our own cultural biases, we view certain weapons and certain martial arts in certain lights. And as a result, the European broadsword has been depicted in the media as being something that it's actually not. And I hope that this video helps clear that up a little bit, because it's something that I want to see in movies more. See more of these flowing, elegant movements and motions that would have been used by actual straight swords. I just want to say as well that I myself am always learning. I'm by no means a master in any discipline and I'm always on a journey to perfect my art and craft. This video was made for the basis of historical and educational purposes. This is not a functional technique, training video or tutorial. It's simply a video to help educate people on the history of a real life weapon and the martial arts that surround it. I'm also in no way condoning violence of any sort as all the weapons used have been practice weapons and all the people participating in the video have been trained martial artists. Swords have been illegal for a long time in most parts of the world, so please, before purchasing any weapon, whether it's practice or otherwise, check with your local laws to make sure that you're not breaking any before you buy them. And always remember to train safely and that plays the way.